Yeah, Chairman, Dr. Lefebvre, thank you very much for the kind invitation to the EBC meeting, and also thank you to Terumo for sponsoring this session. The presentation title for today will be put in the bench model with Ultimaster Tensei Stent. So my job today will be to illuminate the fact, as we have previously seen, that POT can improve clinical outcomes. Now, the straightforward answer to that would be that POT corrects underexpansion in the proximal segment of the bifurcation. And what I would try to deal with uh, on the bench model is how POT facilitates side bridge access, so how it can help procedurally if side bridge intervention is needed. First of all, when we talk about POT, it is not only the proximal optimization we talk about, it is a technique. Any technique, it needs to be learned and executed correctly. So the emphasis of this brief presentation will be on how to correctly execute proximal optimization. And uh, thereby, I would like to focus on two important segments, not to overlook the proximal edge of the stent, and secondly, how to be precise at the point of the confluence at the bifurcation core. So let us first start with the more proximal segment. If you do not perform POT at all, what is naturally going to be happening, and you see it here on the bench, and thank you to Dr. Lefebvre for, for performing uh, meticulously this bench testing, what you namely see is that you can rewire abluminally. So you basically go behind the struts and you proceed then into the stent lumen without noticing this on most occasions on the angiography. And that is the great value of this bench testing because it shows us that not seeing this on angiography has dramatic procedural consequences. So not performing POT leaves you with mala position and under expansion, and the mala position that you have in the very proximal edge of the stent can lead to abluminal rewiring. To avoid this, or to circumvent this, you can perform POT and all is good. However, POT being a technique needs to be performed correctly. And if you perform it like this, as you could see on this example, it is too distal. So performing it too distal or with an undersized balloon leaves you at the proximal edge of the stent with the very same result as not performing POT at all. What you see now here, on this uh, bench test is that the wire doesn't go straight forward into the stent lumen. It rather still can go behind the struts and you can still have abluminal rewiring, even though you think that you have performed pot. It was not performed correctly and it leaves the proximal part of the stent still not expanded well with a large portion of mal opposition. So, if you think in terms of graphically depicting what we just saw, on the left-hand side of the slide, you see no pot at all. And on the right-hand side of the slide, you see inadequate pot with two distal and or underside balloon. The consequence is the same. You can rewire abluminally. Now let us focus on the more distal segment at the bifurcation core. So if you do not perform pot or if it is performed in a way that is not correct, you will practically always aim for the proximal cell when trying to rewire the side branch, as you can see nicely here in this bench test. This is not what we try to achieve with crossover stenting. We try to go as distal as possible when re-accessing the side branch. So how can we correct this? How can we give us a chance of distal side bench access? Well, by performing proper pot. And as you can see on this bench test, this may require two balloon inflations. So we need to take care of the proximal edge of the stent, and we need to be precise at the carina, which you now see after performing optimal pot, the wire still preferably goes to, through the proximal cell. However, we gave ourselves the chance of rewiring through the distal part, as you can see now. So once again, performing POT requires meticulous proceeding, and it may require more than one inflation. It is just important for us to know what are we doing. We need to be precise at the proximal edge, but we also need to be precise at the distal edge of the bifurcation core, basically. Only then can we allow ourselves 
the opportunity to have distal side branch access, which is for us important, as you see nicely here on this bench test. So you can always argue, or some colleagues argue, well, if we perform POT2 distally, the consequences are Carvina shift, and Carvina shift may uh, go away in a few days. Well, that is not always the case, and you see here in top, if we perform two distal POT as depicted here, what is the consequence? The consequence is unintended crush. You see here the nice near Carvina of correct top, and this is what happens if you do what was just done on the previous slide. This can, of course, translate to stent-related events. In conclusion, proximal optimization requires meticulous technique, and it requires knowledge how to perform POT, not forgetting the proximal edge of the stent and being also precise at the distal part at the bifurcation core. Thank you very much once again.